I still, I, I still just write. I, I'm, I'm still old school. I, I still use a pen and I use a pad. I still have a notebook that I carry around. Um, just any ideas. Um, I'm not gonna. I, I, I notice I don't get full poems or full stories anymore, but it could be a thought. Um, but yeah, I still write. I still write ideas down. How had it all started? Well, with the poetry journey. It started when I was in, in primary school, where I used to listen to, to music, especially hip-hop music. I was a big fan of hip-hop music. I would do that from primary school, and then in middle school, and intermediate school. And then when I went to high school, I, I had this book that we made. And we called it the, the Orb, O-R-B, Original Rhyme Book. Oh. Right? And what we used to do with the Orb, is that I would write a rap and then I'll give it to a classmate and they would respond mm. in, in the book. And it was like battling, but we weren't confident in saying it, so we would write it. And from that, I was able to learn different styles from different friends who would write that. And this book, believe it or not, went to different schools. So we would give it to a friend who went to a rival high school wow. and their friends would rap and then we'll get it back and then we'll respond back and then we'll give it to another high school. And this book became like this. And in that, just a side note, there's people in New Zealand that wrote in that book that became uh, music celebrities and got into music. And then I started, I started rapping with some friends. So we had to write. But then we got into it and we got a couple of producers and they said, hey, we want you to write like this. And we didn't like it. The, the, the group that I had, we were very um, free thinkers. And we didn't like being told, you got to rap about this mm -hmm. because this will sell. And we want you to rap one, two, three, four, one, two, where we had too much to say, especially me, I had too much to say. Um, so my, my, my writing wasn't a traditional rap line where it would be a beat, you're working on a beat. So I went on YouTube, started watching other things and then I came across this channel called the Deaf Poetry Jam channel and they would perform. But these guys did a style which was called spoken word poetry. Um, a lot of that influence comes from like a... Um, black American church preachers, Muhammad Ali, his style of talking, very similar to this. It was like rap, but wasn't rap. There was no music, there was no beat. And when I watched it, I thought, what, what is this? And I, I looked at how I write, and it was very similar to what they were saying. And I thought, wow, this is what I want to do. And I wrote my first, my first piece. And I wrote it at three in the morning. And I remember I, I would sleep with my laptop next to my bed any ideas wake up open laptop bomb and i did it one night and i wrote my first poem in like 10 minutes and it was a poem called uh love love them more give me role models and life miles and not pick up bear bottles to write down winning letters and forget yesterday and have no truth tomorrow they need time taken to understand their surroundings to keep themselves grounding and life boundaries and know that knowledge is what's counting Fists can talk, but knowledge can scream and silence any violence that dad taught them or off some C4 movie screen. Woo! Now I'm not saying this is for all. Poverty occurs in all lives for sure, but there's a thin line between what is real and what is only for sure. These are the kids that need love at home. So is this the letter of the law or the spirit of the Lord that allows me to soar higher and spit it for y'all? Or reminisce on the time I did better for the cause while witness another murder body on the city beat to the morgue? No, I realize that these words ain't words on the page, but more like a letter to the law. And we need to tell our kids we love them more. Yeah! And this girl, I saw her on YouTube, and I was like, she is on the show. She's real, and she's coming to New Zealand. So we went to the show, and there she was. So I talked to her, I ran up to her, I said, hey, my name is Jai, and I saw your stuff on YouTube, and um, I, I, I write. Do you? And I go, yeah, all right. And she goes, yeah, well, where can I see your stuff? I go, oh, I've never done it before. Never, never done it. And then the, the group that she was performing with, they said to us, well, we have an open mic 
night on every Tuesday at this bar. Why don't you come in, you know, share your, your poetry? Yeah, I'll be there. I was so excited. I went to this bar, it must have been about eight. Eight people at this bar. I had no idea what to expect. And everyone who went up and performed, it was open mic, so a lot of people just trying new things, a lot of people who just love poetry. And it was, to me, it was boring. It, they were performing just like the things you learn at school. And I was just like, oh, this sucks. They're not going to like my stuff. My stuff's very different to this. Oh, I'm, am, am, I, am I a fool? You know? And she was there, though. And I wanted her to see. She was a special guest that, that day, right? So she performed in the middle. Her, she was a special guest, did her piece. And then she went outside to have a smoke. When she went outside to have a smoke, this is Nikki, the, the American, they said my name to come up. Oh. Well, the whole purpose is I want this, her to see <laughs> if my style is okay. And I remember I, I performed it. And when I performed it, she walked in. So nervous. And then I walked off stage. And the claps like this. And not excitement. And I sat down and I thought, oh, that was a wasted time. Wasted time. Then that Nikki from New York, she comes up to me. And she says something along the lines, I love it. Do not change that. You are a breath of fresh air to your community. And I said, I don't know this community. I just, want, I just wrote this once upon a time and I saw you on YouTube and I thought I can do the New Zealand version of it. And she goes, you are a breath of fresh air. And she goes, next week, have you ever heard of a poetry slam? I said, no, no, what's that? And she goes, it's a competition, a competition. And she said that a poetry slam is where a, a group of poets compete to become the best poet on the night. Three rounds, three original poems, oh, no longer than three finish. minutes. It was March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Oh. The biggest drinking day of the calendar year. We rock up to the bar and there, remember it was eight, Eight people the week before there must have been about 300 people not there for poetry they were at the bar to drink and it was loud she had to when she was on the microphone because she was the presenter she was organized she had to tell people to shut up can you please shut up we're doing a poetry thing people were yelling at her it's a bar it's saint patrick's day don't tell us to shut up and i thought oh this is the worst thing this is the worst thing they pull names out the hat first person me oh so i <laughs> you're lucky well like i had no example well, i've never done this before the whole crowd's full of drunk people mm. and i have to be first so all i remembered your own poem three minutes so i performed performed my poem the best i could i write to express to suppress my inner thoughts and now with the address thing that is in the same bar with 300 drunk people and if you watch the video there's no noise because for some reason my voice and my words shut up a whole bar of drunk people on St. Patrick's Day and I performed and then people voted and I won and I won you know? and that's that's what kicked it all off was that night uh, you had so amazing start, like very, very lucky rise in, oh. uh, in performing in poetry. So many coincidences happened in your life and you already reached some point in this. So yeah. uh, why did you stop performing and what did you feel about it? I, um, you're not the first person who has asked me that question. Um, I. I had, a, I had a family, I had kids. And then when kids came along, um, I guess all that creative energy and time that I put into shows and to writing and things like that, that energy now went to the responsibility of being a parent um, and a husband. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's what it was. Um, I think also, um, when I was performing, I traveled the world. And I was able to, to perform and, and teach at Berkeley University in California. And I was able to go to um, New York and actually meet up with that performer that came from New York the very first time I performed, meet up with her and do some performing there. 
And New York to me is the birthplace of that style of poetry that we do, the spoken word poetry. And to be able to perform there and in, and in LA, um, I think I reached as far as I wanted to go with my performance. So what is special in your style? In my style? Mm -hmm. um, they're my stories. I've got a poem where I talk about race. A lot of people talk about race. Now, I'm, I'm mixed race. Um, so my poem is actually about a running race. But the people I'm running with and the crowd that's watching me run are different races while I'm running a race. When they run the race, they're running. Culture, race doesn't determine how you run, how you run your walk in life, how you run. Um, when you run, you run. You, unless, unless you don't have legs, I guess. But if you have legs and you can run, a black person, a white person don't run different. You run, run the same way. Maybe your journey is different. Maybe some of the, the journey to the end is harder. But end of the day, the actual act of running is pretty simple. You just move one leg forward, one leg forward. And that's what the story was about. So it's, it's, taking, it's taking a topic that a lot of people talk about and just making it different and adding maybe some hip hop into it. Um, so that's what my style would always be. It's just something a little bit different instead of just being the same poem. Because when it's the same poem, but it's your story, but it's done the same, what are you doing? Yeah, you know, you're just saying the same thing. So say your story, because your story is unique to you, your poem or your piece should be unique, you know, if you're going to do it in that, in that sort of style. And I think when you write not any, anything, but in spoken word, um, the ones that are successful are those that, that write their stories. So you've joined uh, the audience now and uh, you are a financial broker. Yeah. This is sort of world of numbers and money. Yeah. Does it go against of your um, inner poetical world? Oh, that's a good question. To a degree, to a degree. Um, but um, I guess my priorities changed. You know, now with children and a family, you want to provide for them as as much as you can, so they can have opportunities to be the best that they can be, creatively as well. Um, what would I prefer to do? Well, definitely the arts. Definitely the arts. Um, and maybe people watching this or people who could critique this could say, well, maybe you, you didn't work hard enough to be able to make it into something. Maybe. Um, maybe, maybe. But I found that finance, I've done finance almost as, as long as I was writing, um, you know, doing shows the amount of time. So... If I was to contrast the two, which one was easier to make money and to provide for my family? The finance side was. But which one, if I was to pick which one made me feel freer and feel like I could be the best self I could be? Definitely, writing. Have you tried to, to transfer your experience to the young generation? So at the, I guess at the end of my, my writing and my performance career, um, I spent a lot of time mentoring other people, teaching other people. So me and a, and a good friend, poet of mine, her name was Grace Taylor. Um, we came together and we created um, an event called Rising Voices, um, which was New Zealand's first, first youth poetry slam. And it was aimed at senior high school students and university students um, who could participate in these slams. Like a lot of the slams would be at bars. So of course, young people can't go there. So where, where could they do that? So we did Rising Voices and we went for funding and what we did is that not only did we create the, the slam, the competition, we also did six weeks worth of writing workshops to prepare people to come in. And we had a great turnout and a lot of those poets now, not just the winners, but a lot of those that participate through the workshops still continue to do it. A lot of them, um, maybe slamming wasn't their thing, the competition side, but the writing side was their thing um, and some of them have gone and finished degrees in creative writing. Some of them have gone on to journalism, to become journalists. Um, some are still performing to this day. Some are musicians, some are, I know one is working on Broadway in, in New York City now wow. as an actress. Um, and she still writes and writes, um, you know, theater and stage plays and things like that. So it's cool, it's cool to see the alumni. We had that going 
for about six, seven years. And we had it, it wasn't a small thing either. When we first won, we wanted to make sure it was a big, grand thing. So we had it at um, the Auckland Town Hall, which is a pretty respectable place to have it. Um, from that, I know that now they, they have high school competitions now um, that branched off the idea. Um, so yeah, so it's good. So the youth spoken word poetry now is being taught in New Zealand high schools. It's made that poetry that we used to learn when we were younger, not boring. Um, they participate. It relates to the culture of music that they listen to. And um, it was cool. And that was probably, that is probably my, my legacy bit that I'm proud of the most. Um, do you still write? I write with my kids now. You know, when they have English assignments or a story, they go write a story. My little one, she has to write a story. We'll do one together. My older boy, when he does his speeches and his English assignment, we'll, we'll write something together. But the, the idea is still be different, stand out express your idea in a different sort of way especially if you have to perform it and if you perform it this is how you do it you stand use your hands be expressive be loud be confident you can use those same skills but yeah i still write but it's more more with the kids more and more anything now i write to express to suppress my inner thoughts and now with the address thing i undress words i write to satisfy in the ambition with thoughts, where would they fly? I write to graffiti mulch trees that bust semen like ink from despair of a pen giving birth to words. I write when I'm on point, turned on a machine type way. I write to teach. Greedily I learn and portions I share with others. I write selfishly. I write with empathy and charity. I write love with hate and hate with love and love with hate and Hates with love and love with hates and hates with love. Um, I write an annoyance. I write to get rid of the voices and I write to allow the voices to be heard. I write to see a meaning disappears in the thin air and becomes magic. I write to correct, to solve the world's problems and my secret universe. I write to challenge and to ignore any intellect and imagine what new words I can fathom. I write to rhyme. I write to envision a stadium of 70,000 or a bookstore or a ten score. I write to paint pictures, to illustrate and captivate. I write with goals in mind to have you listen, to meditate and penetrate, to join forces and to mediate. I write to critique, to have an opinion. I write to think like you. I write for hope. I write for my seed to implore reaction to love words like me. I write to have validity. I write to find truth. I write to be emotively charged and to break down on paper. I write to prove. I write to improve and to make room. I write with the grammar that damages my nana to the screw and that punishes my words with hard words like a hammer. I write to hide behind bars when I'm handing out sentences. I write to act, to bring Shakespearean influences with a gather background to make act one damn straight stupendous. I write to get good girls and get good grades. I write to show love for my life. I write to show off, I write to show weakness, I write to share and to testify. I write to have an impact, to break down doors and to spray paint walls of confusion to blow the damn roof off. I write for my review for your enjoyment. I write to make you think. I write for your opinion. I write to make you question and find a lesson in its meaning. I write for my culture and for my experience. I write for truth. Hell, I write to be honest. I write for the kids who trip and stumble to make way, who slip through the cracks of life and speak as if the world is their oyster. I write for that miracle and I write for you. For the reasons see why I write, I thank God that I do.